um, and unwavering belief. Uh, guys just didn't stop believing, and, and we all had a, just a common goal, and we wanted to, to go out here and execute and just be clean, do everything we can, because uh, having, having Ty and Aaron on your, on your helmet, it just makes it that much easier to go and just dig deep and, and do everything you can to try and get the dub. It seems like after Taka and Donna were awarded their helmets that you guys finally found your spark. Did, did something feel different after that point? Anytime you see them, just just such strong people and so resilient. And whenever whenever they they bring out like come out, they, they bring an energy with them that that just radiates throughout the whole entire building or room or whatever whatever it have. And we just build off that and just do everything that we can to start executing. Fourth and goal on the one, and then the conversion after that. Yeah, um, they made it, they gave me a, a run play to the left and just, just caught the ball and ran ran right up the middle. Everybody blocked it up, so it was easy for me. Is there a sense of responsibility in those moments, just being an older guy, being a captain? You know, sometimes things have to, things sometimes have to fall on your shoulders. No, at the end of the day, it's still football, and you just got to go out there and execute and do your job. Was there ever a thought to kick that last extra point? I'm pretty sure they they called it way way before we even got towards the end zone. Yeah. What was um, behind the magic between you and Dalton tonight? Um, just the just the relationship that we've been developing ever since he stepped on campus in 2020 and it's just taken off and he's an easy guy to throw the ball. Um, you see what he did tonight when he when he touches the ball like that. He he makes plays and he extends them and and he's a rack player so he he can do it all. So we just got to make sure that we're getting him the ball. For five touchdowns today, two passing, three rushing. How, what was it like to just go against this team, knowing this is kind of hometownish type team? We just wanted to come out here and battle. I mean, we're going to give it all, our all, and we're just looking forward to, to playing, and we wanted to make sure that we represented 22 well, having, having that on our helmet. Cam, what kind of adjustments did you guys make at that point? Nothing. We just came out and just, just wanted to keep running our offense. Uh, we, we always talk. It's not about the plays. It's about the players, and we just got to go out there and execute and be clean with it. How much was Kincaid's consistency? Um, how much did that help you with the risks that you were taking and feeling more comfortable in, in going for those? Yeah, when you got a guy that's just battling and doing everything that he can, it, it, it makes you want to go that much harder. And he's, he's a guy that just has a knack for catching the ball, so you gotta, you got to force on the ball in, in some situations. Dalton, you had 215 yards. How'd that game feel? It was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, just knowing what the game meant to us, uh, the environment was awesome, the fans brought it, but just coming out with the win was the biggest thing. 14-0. I mean, did you guys feel like you had to regroup, or was it just kind of stay locked in? What, what was what was that all about? Just uh, well, like I said, unwavering belief. We gotta we gotta believe in what we got going, and, and that it's gonna work eventually. And we just gotta keep going, and no matter how it's going, we're we're gonna just believe in each other. Dalton, can you talk about that? So there was that time where you guys were, came out of the second half, and you were hitting it. You and Cam were really connecting, and then there was that pause. I mean, the, the they were looking at the targeting, and it just seemed to go on forever. How did you guys stay focused during that time? Uh, every time we get in the huddle, this dude kind of takes over, says a few things, and we just kind of just roll from there. About the way Cam played tonight. Um, shoot, I mean, I don't play quarterback, but I think it looked good from where I was standing. <laughs> but no, I just love his leadership. You know, he's always the one that's bringing the group together, and um, you know, that's what we need on the team, especially when we're going through adversity. Having that guy that can be vocal and bringing up the guys is what we need in tough situations. Today, you, get a <laughs> <laughs> you had a little toe tapped over there. I was trying to try to, try to be like you, you know. <clears throat> you get a big sack, two back-to-back -back sacks on, for the defense to get a good stop. I mean, obviously the first half was a little rough for the defense. Just kind of walk us through how that worked out in that second half. Yeah, man. I mean, you guys can see it. Their their team is full of explosive players, so we knew that it was going to be a challenge for us. But uh, you know, they got to play us for four quarters. And so that just shows the resiliency of our, of our defense, of our team, and our culture. So uh, we just played to the clock at zero, and it fell in our favor. Credit, what does this mean? This win mean to the defense? You know, they've had, you guys have had some, some not so great performances, but what does it mean to like actually show USC that you guys can hang with them? Yeah, I think it just shows our character. Like, if you look at the numbers, I, I'm sure it's not pretty, but it shows that we played to the end. I'm proud of our guys. Devon, what kind of what does this do for your, I don't know, your energy level, your mentality moving forward? Just how rewarding is it to get a big win like this? Uh, you know, it's great, uh, especially coming into this bye week as well. You know, we get to recuperate our bodies, make sure we gather ourselves together. But, you know, we're going to watch the film. We're uh, going to correct some mistakes. But, you know, 
I love these kind of games because it's, it shows who's more knit as a team, who stays together in tough situations. And I felt like that's what is the difference today. And, you know, having Ty and Aaron on the side of our helmets, that was another reminder of why we had to stay resilient because that game was for them. So, you know, I'm just grateful that all the guys came together and we were able to get the dub. Rene, what was the plan defensively on that final drive of the game for SC? Just to prevent them from getting past the 50-yard line. I mean, not to, you know, it's pretty obvious, right? They needed a field goal, so we were going to back up and keep everything in front of us. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just throwing the ball my way. Uh, my job is just to catch it and do what I can with it. Sorry, you caught it. I mean, that's, that's the goal, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for the guys? Utah and USC has been kind of a big rivalry over the past couple of years. Does this win, does this win mean more to you guys beating a team like USC? I mean, it's always nice just knowing that they're going to be in the Big 12 next year and we'll, we'll probably won't play them again. Um, Ready to go? Okay. Well, that certainly has to go down to one of the most exciting games in Rice Eccles history. Um, what, a, what a performance uh, by our football team. Uh, that's a good football team we beat, by the way. That is a really good team, very talented, well coached. Quarterback's tremendous. The receiving core is, is as good as it is in the country. And so we had our hands full. Um, had a tough time getting stops on defense, particularly early in the game. But we made the one we needed most at the end. Uh, still got to figure out what's going on with that clock. I mean, I don't know. Someone's got to explain all that to me. It was, it was uh, bizarre how that went down. But anyway, um, offense, start to finish, outstanding. Cam Rising, uh, competitor, warrior, uh, you name it, he's a champion. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, I don't know what the record is for tight ends in a game here, catches or, or yards, but he has to be. Uh, right there uh, at the doorstep of that. Um, and again, the, the toughness and the guts and the grit, the sheer grit and determination of our football team to continue to hang in there was uh, just, it's just a joy to coach those guys. Love coaching this team and uh, proud to uh, be associated with them. Uh, statistically, like I said, a lot of offensive fireworks, both teams, you know, well over 500 yards. I guess it turned out we're within six yards of each other. Um, Cam had a terrific night, like I said, and uh, you know, running the football, he always gives us those key yards and uh, uh, conversions, and and you know, with his legs, every game he seems to come up with some something uh, just timely, incredible, uh, positive plays uh, running the football. Um, again, Dalton Kincaid, 15 catches, 217 yards. Uh, the guy's a, an absolute 
athlete, one of the, you know, he's got to be one of the best tight ends in the country, uh, without a doubt. So, anyway, this keeps us in the race. Still got a lot of football left. Uh, what are we, five and two now, and uh, still in the hunt. I still believe that that nobody will go through the the Pac-12 schedule undefeated, and uh, you know the history is bore that out. I think most most years. And so we just got to take it one week at a time and just continuing to uh, get better as a team and uh, got to figure out what we uh, lacked on defense tonight and, and uh, get that corrected. But again, they made the stop they had to make and that was, uh, that was the, uh, the uh, critical stop to win the football game. So, questions? Is there any doubt that you guys were going for two there? There was doubt if there would have been, uh, it, was, it was in my mind, I had talked to Andy as the drive started. Said if we score here and the clock is you know close to expiring, we're going for two. If there's you know a couple minutes left, then we're going to kick the PAT. And so it played out, uh, you know, exactly you know in our benefit as we as good as we could have hoped. And when there was what 35 whatever seconds left, it was it was already predetermined. We already knew the play call because we had talked about it at the onset of the uh, of when we took over the possession. Like more than just one win. Well, they all count as one, but this seems like uh, a pretty, pretty big win. And and uh, on a national stage, you know, we're on Fox National against a you know a top ten or twelve. I don't. What were they ranked? So, seven, uh, seventh ranked team. So uh, great, uh, great for our brand, great for our program, great for our university, the community. It's uh, a lot of positives with that. Coach, with Cam Rising, he received a lot of criticism after the Florida game for the end of Not the game by me. decision. Not by you. By you? Not by me. Not by you either. <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> PK, I figure. She was a jerk. <laughs> but how, how was it rewarding to see him make the play at the end there to, to seal the deal? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we, we called a play that the ball would be in his hands to either, you know, find an open receiver or tuck it and get in the end zone. And, and uh, he did just that. And, uh, you know, he has been so – incredible for us ever since he took over in game four or whatever it was last year. It's just been a great, a great uh, feeling to have him at the controls of the offense. Kyle, do you feel like there was a turning point in this game? Obviously, you guys have a turn, like a the fumble on the three-yard line, but... <sighs> you know, I don't think there was a turning point. I think it was just a matter of us just continuing to fight and continue to, you know, scratch and claw our way in, in, into the game each time. It was a scoring contest there. You know, field goals were not going to be in the equation in this game. And in fact, uh, you know, as we drove the football, you know, I tell Andy, you're in four down territory, you know, once we hit midfield. I mean, that's, that was uh, the way this game was going. You weren't going to, field goals were going to uh, get you off pace and, and off schedule. And so it was uh, touchdowns are broke. And uh, offense responded, made a bunch of first downs again, uh, 30, I believe, 30 first downs. And uh, so I don't think there was one pivotal turning point. I think it was just a, uh, a matter of just staying after it and never, uh, never say die attitude. And we, uh, you know, couldn't be more proud of our of our guys. And and it was great to be able to get that win with Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe's mothers here at the game. And internally, we had dedicated this game. You know, we didn't announce it to anybody, but we had dedicated this game to our fallen teammates. And uh, how rewarding to be able to give those mothers the game ball in the locker room after the game. The energy did kind of shift after Taka and Donna received the game helmets. But did you guys feel that at all? Little boost there, absolutely. And, and uh, the third quarter, the between the third and fourth quarter, you know, our, our uh, tribute that we put up that gives me a, a boost every every game. And so, uh, and I think our players feel the same way. And and uh, it's a great way to continue to remember those two young men. Uh, the, uh, the ESPN 700 broadcast apparently said that Tavion didn't finish the game or left the game. Can you speak to that? Like left and went home? Not went no. home, but did not finish the game. What do you mean by didn't finish the game? Well, he... If that's incorrect, I apologize. Well, the play calls were such, we just got, you know, we're throwing the ball, throwing the ball, and, and his number didn't come up uh, much in that second half. Now, if he had left the sideline, you'll have to research that. But or, uh, That's the first I've heard of that. confident were you that Dalton could step up and how I guess vindicating if you were confident was tonight's performance? Very confident. It wasn't just Dalton, it needed to be a few other guys as well. The the uh, 
tight end room's got some real talented young men, uh, Munir McLean, Thomas Yasmin, uh, Logan Kendall. So it needed to be a concerted effort by three or four guys to pick up the slack for, for Brant. And those guys certainly did. Money Parks has been more of a contributor since Brant went down. Uh, as has uh, Jalen Dixon. So, so Bryant was a big part of uh, our offensive production, but I think we have, uh, you know, our players have done a good job of, of picking up the slack and, and uh, you know, in his absence, uh, making a bunch of plays. Coach, is this a good time to have a bye? Great time to have a bye. Yep, after an emotional win like this, and, and uh, we're, uh, the bye has come later this year than most years. You know, we're in week, what, seven? Plus, you know, your four weeks of training camp. You know, we've been 11 straight weeks, and Players could certainly use a, uh, some downtime right now. And, and it's not a full buy because we play on Thursday, which is fine because that gives us another extended period of time for the next game for preparation. How much do you think this win is going to boost the confidence of the defense? The confidence of the D? Uh, w not much. You know, we, we didn't play our best on defense, I mean, as evidenced by the stats, as evidenced by the, you know, just uh, having a hard time getting stops in the first half. But... But uh, there was no lack of effort, no lack of uh, running the football. We just got to be smarter and coach them better. You know, I'm not going to blame the players. I'm going to blame myself, and and uh, and we got to do a better job coaching them. Yeah, there's been in years past. It's always been uh, you know your defense has always stepped up, and the offense mm -hmm. has sometimes struggled to score points. Now you've got an offense that seems like it can do whatever you need to to fight. It, it, what's it like to be able to coach that difference, knowing that it's kind of been a flip of how things have been for you? Well, it's great to have a high-powered offense, which is what we have. I mean, uh, and it all starts with Cam. The offensive line never gets enough credit. I should mention them because they they did a great job protecting the passer. I don't know how many times he got sacked, but it wasn't zero. There you go. They did a phenomenal job uh, protecting. Uh, we run the ran the ball just enough to, to keep them off balance. I don't know what we came out with or came away with rushing, but uh, it was enough to, to not be one-dimensional. And then, of course, Cam threw for well over 400 yards. What changes did you make at halftime to allow you guys to get more pressure in the second half? Well, we just uh, challenged the D-line, first of all, to, you know, to, to up, the, you know, up the, the pressure and, and uh, become more of a pass rush mindset and, and getting off the ball better. And so that helped. We also dialed up a little more pressure in the second half, brought more uh, five, six, seven-man pressures. And so I think it was a combination of, of those things. How concerned were you with that delay after the team got going and Cam and um, Dalton were really connecting in that first series of the second half? And then there was that long delay with the um, – they were checking out the targeting, targeting, and then oh, I don't know what else. No, nah, that's just part of the game. No frustration, no, no, uh, no thoughts on that. It's just you know that stuff happens in game, and and uh, like I said, the real thing I want to you know get to the bottom of is is the clock situation at the end because that very well could have cost us the game. And you know we, we intercept the ball and we're running back, and and I see the clock stop, then it starts up again, and then it stops again during the play, and then. After when all is said and done, they put more time on than than was you know at any point during that sequence. And so, apparently, the the explanation I got was uh, an inadvertent whistle or an inadvertent inadvertent stoppage of play by the ref, and which would have stopped the clock right there. But but it was definitely a mistake because the interception was in progress. So, anyway, we'll we'll figure it out just for our knowledge, and so we know how to you know proceed if we ever get in situations like that again. But I, I think that's a, a you know, an anomaly, a one-off. I don't expect that to ever happen again. Final question. Thanks, guys. Jordy's the boss. Okay. Thanks, Jordy. What time is it? Seems like midnight. <laughs>